Whether it's weight gain, memory loss, thinning hair, feeling like you're going crazy, irregular periods, or any other symptom of perimenopause or menopause, you have not been taught how to deal with that. Yes, we studied the square root of 64 when we were in school, but we never talked enough about the changes that a woman goes through. This is why so many women starting 35 and up are starting to feel different, yet they don't know what's going on. And they cannot find answers to how to change these things. We are taught to underestimate the importance of nutrition when it comes to our health, because that's what Western medicine does. They know all about medication, but they know nothing about attrition. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the whole medical school, they have about one semester of nutrition. Yet, let food be thy medicine, and let thy medicine be thy food. I hope I said that right. But you get my point. Food is healing or destroying. And what we've done in the last hundred years to our nutrition is showing in our health. Yes, naturally a woman goes through change during perimenopause and menopause, but a change should be just a shift, not this turbulence that's going on in everyone's life. This is why today I want to talk about the top foods that you want to incorporate in your nutrition to help balance your hormones so that you don't have these side effects like hot flashes and thinning hair weight gain or any of them and i'll explain to you what they are how they affect your body and then give you a few ideas and recipes and if you're new to my channel hi i'm lex vuko i have been in fitness and health industry for over 20 years now i've been overweight i've been underweight i had hypothyroidism i've trained in amateur bodybuilding kickboxing and boxing i've damaged my body and then i helped it heal again and i've learned to listen to my body so that i know what i need to do when it's communicating with me at this point i've also helped hundreds of women feel great in their bodies and now i share all that information with you here so make sure to hit that subscribe button because i'm here to help you feel at a 10 once again all right without further ado let me get into the first one on my list which is flax seeds you know these little golden brown seeds you can find them in the seed form or sometimes ground the reason you want to add flax seeds is they are outstanding they have these things called lignans they are so-called phytoestrogens which actually means they help your body balance estrogen if you have too much it basically tells the body reduce it if you have too little it tells the body produce it and the way they do that is they lock onto estrogen receptor sites and that way trick your body into increasing or decreasing the production of estrogen besides that they are full of omega-3 fatty acids fiber and vitamins such as b1 and b6 Fun fact, by the way, if you consume enough B1, it acts as a natural mosquito repellent. Ta-da! Back to flax seeds. Because of these lignans, they are a great choice if you're going through perimenopause or menopause to reduce things such as hot flashes or night sweats. Now, as I said earlier, you can find them typically in the raw form as seeds or ground. Some people believe that they should be ground so we digest them better. However, that you should grind them right before you eat them. But I don't know about you. That sounds like a lot of work to me and it's just not going to happen in my household. So what I do is I mix and match. Sometimes I buy the seeds. Sometimes I buy them ground. And how you can use them in your nutrition is super easy. A lot of vegans already know they use something called flex egg. Anytime they need something like egg white consistency, you put flax in water, you wait a few minutes, and you get that slimy consistency of egg white. You can add them to your smoothies, to your oatmeal. They really don't taste that much. I love to add them to my smoothies. But with that said, a note. If you add them to a smoothie and then wait a while till you drink it, it's going to have a really different texture. I'm not going to say it's a good one because of that flex egg effect per se. So if you're adding it to a smoothie, ideally you're going to drink that smoothie right away. Otherwise, again, put them in your oatmeal or add them to any baked goods and it's just going to be just as good. And by the way, if you are new to this healthy food and you need healthy recipes or healthy dessert ideas, you may want to check out my recipe book. I'll leave the link in the description where you can find more information about it. I believe all recipes by one are vegan, but it tells you how you can add animal protein should you want to. There's a bunch of dips, desserts, and dinners in there that are easy to make because I'm a lazy cook and I need things that are easy. Okay, the next one on the list are pumpkin seeds. Do not overlook the power of pumpkin seeds. They're full of magnesium magnesium, zinc, healthy fats, antioxidants. Now, magnesium is one of the minerals that most people are deficient in, but it's crucial because it helps calm down the nervous system and reduce stress. 
On the other hand, zinc is crucial for hormone production and immune function. See, you think these little things are just snacks, yet you don't know they are powerful. So consuming these little seeds can help you stabilize your mood and stabilize your hormone levels, which is obviously what we're talking about when it comes to perimenopause or menopause, because it all comes down to hormonal balance. When it comes to recipes, once again, you can be as creative as you want. You can snack them just as they are. You can add them to salads. You can add them even to yogurt. And one of my favorite recipes is in my recipe book where I add all the seeds, sometimes nuts, mix them well, mix them with egg, put them in the oven, and I have a snack for days. By the way, if you're still watching this, that means you're getting some value out of this. And I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button, because again, I'm sharing crucial information with you here that is going to help you along your way. And I would love to have you on my team. The next thing on the list is sesame seeds. It's high in calcium, magnesium, zinc, and phytoestrogens, just like flax seeds. I've already mentioned benefits of magnesium and zinc, but additionally, I want to add that calcium and magnesium support bone health, which is essential during menopause. And by the way, this is why you need to be lifting weights, ladies, but we're going to talk about that another time. Oh, so many ideas when it comes to sesame seeds. You can sprinkle them on your salads, stir fries. You can use tahini, which is a sesame paste. It's basically ground sesame seeds made into a butter, just like a peanut butter, except healthier. And it's so yummy. One of my favorite things is I get a jar of tahini, I add local honey to it, mix it well, put it in the fridge, and I take a spoonful or two of that a day. I cannot tell you how tasty that is. Oh my gosh. And when you try it, I'll just say, you're welcome. By the way, if you've tried tahini before, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Without honey, it can be a little bitter, but with that honey, I'm telling you, baby, oh, so, so good. Just a spoonful or two a day, though. You don't need more than that. One more group of seeds that I want to talk about is sunflower seeds. Oh my goodness, they are another amazing, powerful seed that you can eat. It's high in vitamin E, selenium, magnesium. Vitamin E is an important antioxidant. That means that it's protecting your cells from damage and reducing inflammation. You might have heard of antioxidants oftentimes mentioned when it comes to blueberries, which is exactly the same thing that sunflower seeds do. Now, selenium is so crucial for women. I cannot stress this enough. Once again, most people are deficient in it, but it supports thyroid health where a majority of women are having thyroid issues. And obviously thyroid is connected to your adrenals, connected to your sex hormone, connected to your whole body. Please eat more selenium. And I didn't put this in the list and I'll tell you in a minute why, but if you really lack selenium in your nutrition, take one to two Brazilian nuts a day. Now, obviously you can have them as a snack, on a salad, on your flakes, on your oatmeal and so on. Now, the reason why I talked about these first four seeds is because I want to address seed cycling before we move on to the next foods. Seed cycling is an ancient practice and involves eating certain kinds of seeds during certain times of month. In other words, during different stages of your menstrual cycle. Seed cycling helps balance hormones, especially estrogen and progesterone, which obviously are the key players here. It's even been reported to reduce symptoms of PMS, PCOS, menopause, and endometriosis. Here's how to do it. During the follicular phase, which is day one from your period to day about 14, you're eating more pumpkin seeds and or flax seeds. And then in the luteal phase, which is day 15 to about 28 in a 28 day cycle, you eat more sesame seeds and or sunflower seeds. It's pretty easy to implement, right? And it's yummy and it's not gonna do you any harm. So let's get on it, ladies, shall we? Now, let me know in the comment section, have you heard of seed cycling before? Have you done it? And what's your experience with it? Okay, now that we're done with seeds, I want to move on to the next food that you should implement in your nutrition, which is dried apricots. Not only that they are like nature's candy, but they're full of iron, potassium, fiber, antioxidants, and vitamin A. Because of its high fiber content, it is aiding a digestion and it helps control blood sugar levels. And then potassium supports cardiovascular health. And remember, antioxidants are important to help reduce oxidative stress on the body, on every cell really, reduce inflammation, which again is crucial when we're talking about perimenopause or menopause. Ideas on how to incorporate them, eat them up as a snack, make your own trail mix, 
or you can chop it up and add it to baked goods. Now, a note, when you're buying dried apricots, please always look at the back side where it lists the ingredients and make sure it only says dried apricots. You don't need any other crap with it. Another one of my favorite ways of eating it is adding them to a food processor with dates and nuts and a little bit of coconut oil. Mix it well and oh my gosh, you got yourself one of the yummiest treats you can ever think about. And once again, when you try it, you're welcome. Remember, if you need more information, check out my recipe book. The next food I want to talk about is actually a group of foods, whole grains, such as buckwheat, quinoa, taff or millet. The reason I'm choosing these particular ones is because I want you to go gluten free. Gluten in processed foods has been shown to be an endocrine disruptor, which really means it screws up your hormones. It leads to imbalance, dysfunction, or even disease. So know that when we're talking about whole grains, we're talking about the ones that are gluten free. They're full of fiber, vitamin B, magnesium, iron, you name it. It's probably in one of those foods. And because of its high fiber, it supports digestive health and it balances blood sugar. And if you weren't aware, fiber is crucial when it comes to hormonal balance, because if you're not eating enough fiber throughout the day, you're probably having extra estrogen roaming around your body. And that creates an imbalance. And again, recipe ideas are endless. You can use them in soups, salads, stews, side dishes. I love to cook them first, drain them, add an egg and spices to it, put them on a flat sheet in the oven, and it's really, really great snack. And you won't need any chips or crackers because this will be amazing. The next food I want to talk about is chickpeas. They're also known as garbanzo beans. They are rich in protein, fiber, and phytoestrogens. Remember, we're choosing foods here that will balance your hormones. Generally, you can find them in a store in raw form or in a can. I prefer them in a raw form because then it doesn't have additional stuff added to it. Buy them raw, soak them overnight, and then the next day cook them. And then you can make hummus with it. Remember that awesome tahini? It goes in hummus and it's yummy. You can roast them and add any spices you want to them. You can add it to stews and soups, and you can even add it to salads. One word about chickpeas is yum. And if you're not making your own hummus, what are you even doing with your life? Just kidding. But really, making your own hummus is super easy. All it takes is tahini, chickpeas, salt, lemon, garlic, a bit of water, a bit of olive oil, mix it in a food processor, and you're done. And the cool thing about making it at home is then you can make it per your own taste. The next on the list are berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, mulberries, you name it berries. They are nutrient dense, low calorie fruits, rich in antioxidants, fiber, vitamin C and vitamin K. Remember we mentioned blueberries when it comes to antioxidant level, mulberries have even more, but just buy a mix of strawberries and enjoy them as they are. If you're looking at the prices, frozen ones are generally a little bit better priced. You can add them to your smoothies, you can add them to your yogurt. By the way, never buy fruit yogurt. Buy yogurt and then add your fruit to it. You don't need all that additional sugar. My favorite and my kids' favorite is just eating frozen berries on their own. Or get frozen berries, freeze bananas, mix them in a food processor, and you got yourself the best ice cream that your body will thank you for. Okay, the next thing is melon, such as cantaloupe or honeydew. It is hydrating, it is refreshing, it is high in vitamin E, it is high in vitamin A, C, potassium, and because of its high water content, it keeps you hydrated, which is crucial if you are not already drinking enough water. It supports skin health, by the way, but it also helps support hormonal production and balance. You can enjoy it fresh or in fruit salads. I don't recommend freezing it because of its high water content, it does not freeze well. Or in other words, it ends up being mushy and like ice. And the next thing on the list is probably gonna be your favorite and that is cacao. Now, I'm talking about raw cacao, unprocessed form of chocolate, which is rich in magnesium, iron, antioxidants, and flavonoids. Once again, I'm not talking about chocolate here because chocolate generally has a list of ingredients in there that are not necessarily good for you. And I will explain in a minute what to do instead. Let me first tell you that cacao helps reduce stress and improve mood because of its magnesium content and because of flavonoids. By the way, flavonoids is something you want to pay attention to because it has a bunch of medicinal benefits, including anti-cancer, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral. Like, how cool is that? 
It's also neuroprotective, which means it's guarding your brain and cardioprotective, it's guarding your heart. How cool is that? Now I said no chocolate, so let's talk about it. You can enjoy cacao in the pure form, but it is quite bitter. Here's a few options. You can add cacao nibs to your foods. They are tiny little, but really hard pieces of cacao. So if you don't have strong teeth, eh, maybe not the greatest idea, but it's really easy to add to baking goods. Another idea is you can buy raw cacao and add it to your smoothies with a banana and or peanut butter and oh my goodness, it is one of the best things ever. And my personally favorite is making my own chocolate. All you need is a cacao powder, coconut oil and local honey. Instead of coconut oil, you can also use cacao butter, but it's so hard to find it that when I find it, I cannot justify the price. So again, coconut oil, cacao powder, local honey. Mix it well, you can put it in the freezer or fridge for a few minutes. It's going to freeze, eat it up, and you can thank me later. And again, depends on what you're baking with. You do not want to bake with honey, but once it's baked, you can add honey to it. You don't want to change the temperature of honey because it messes up its great properties. Now, just as it's important to eat more of these things that produce hormonal balance in our bodies, it is very important to start avoiding things that do the damage. And as we really know, the worst thing for us is stress because stress raises cortisol and cortisol matters because it works hand in hand with estrogens. Because as cortisol goes up, estrogen goes down and vice versa. As cortisol goes down, estrogen goes up to the level where it's supposed to be. So let's make reducing stress your priority. And if you're not sure how, I have a whole video explaining how to do things to help your brain reduce stress, improve your mood, and you can click here to watch it now.